Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Get Your Paint On this Thursday. I'm joined here today with Jeff Olson. Well met. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you have to ruin it? <laughs> and Tony Konich. Good morning. <laughs> I didn't expect such a reaction. <laughs> I expected more to that comment, and it just stopped at well met. Well met. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we get to uh, what we're going to be painting this morning. Morning still? There you go. Uh, first things first, we got stream schedule. Uh, if we get that pulled up real quick. we got Dev Hangouts on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Get your paint on, obviously. Thursdays at 10 a.m. We will be streaming next week. Uh, which Will be, is correct. We will be, yeah. Awesome. Which is the last week before Gen Con, right? Mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm correct. Yes. Which we will not be streaming. We will not be streaming correct. during Gen Con. Yeah. yeah. There will be no streams during Gen Con week. <clears throat> Every, um, everybody will be gone in Indianapolis, building our booth, giving dope demos. It'll also be like uh, 105 degrees or something, right? It's going to, yeah, I hear it's going to be very, There's very like a heat wave. Really, that. really not excited for yeah. that. <laughs> We've had a, a beautiful, temperate, like, it's been summer actually, here in it's, Seattle. Uh, it's been pretty kind of poopy, actually. They're like rainy and nasty. Uh, but I love this. My favorite weather, though. Yeah, okay, I mean me too. But anyways, <laughs> back to the stream schedule. Uh, we've got staff showdown monthly. I don't know when our next one is scheduled. I haven't seen it. Uh, yet. It is. Oh, uh, I think we've confirmed. I think it's going to be mid August. It might be a week or two after we get back. Gen, Gen combination Con. of okay. lock and load and Gen Con definitely messes up our ability to do things. Yeah, it really does. Uh, and then we've got Primecast Live, which is also, I believe, to be determined. Yes. Um, next, thing's, n next thing, we've got the Hobby and Terrain blog, uh, which Danny has been updating with some cool new projects that he's working on. He's putting together some dioramas for some various different things. Yeah, I think he's doing uh, a cool uh, Riot Quest diorama. Yeah, I think that's the Riot Quest one that he's working this on. This is what he was showing me the other day. Uh, which is super cool. It's turned out a lot better and a lot more... Um, involved that I was expecting it to be. Because mm -hmm. Dan, Danny's dope. Because Danny's really good at what he does. Very, very good at what he does. Um, so uh, make sure to tune into that. Check that out. Uh, he updates it very, very frequently. So uh, make sure you follow that. Uh, next, we've got our mini crates. We've got three of them to go over here. Uh, first two, we've got uh, just our standard mini crate. Uh, it's their last week to order Midwinter Night's Dream. Uh, that'll be, you have to subscribe by July 19th, which I believe is tomorrow. Uh, yes, that is so, correct. Uh, tomorrow is the last day. Yep. And if you want to get the VIP subscription model, that is Bride of Arcadius, uh, which we painted on stream about a month and a half ago. The model sick. Uh, it was, yeah, that's one of my favorite mini crate models. That Especially so considering the Thornfall changes coming in the theme remix mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, And since that's been the VIP model for a while, I just want to remind people that um, you, you're kind of within the last month range of getting that model. Since it's right. been about six this months, six. this is... Yeah. yeah. Um, so we We're should not be that far. Soon. Uh, then we've got the L5R mini crate, Legend of the Five Rings mini crate. Mm -hmm. We've got Hida Kasada, the Crab Clan. Uh, which is available until August 5th, and the VIP subscription model, which is, which is Shosuro Sadako. That's the one I'm waiting for. Yep. Have you not gotten that yet? I haven't ordered it. Oh, well, that <laughs> makes it hard to get it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I just need to kind of put my little order <laughs> get, in and watch get it into it. it. Yeah. Um, and then we've got our Savage Mini Crate, which is our new mini crate that we are in the process of launching, where you will get characters from the Robert E. Howard uh, Conan line. Yep. Oh, uh, he, so he... Robert Howard is prolific. He did a lot of cool Conan stuff. Well, and other things outside Conan as oh, well. Oh, right. okay. Yeah. Solomon Kane. Yep. yep. So we've got Dark Agnes, which is the uh, first month model, and King Conan, which is the VIP miniature. So uh, make sure to, I believe we, we're taking pre orders for that now. Mm -hmm. uh, so go ahead and, and follow that to sign up and uh, get those when they become available. Uh, next thing we want to talk about real quick, you guys, is Mompok My Store. We went over this a little bit last week. Basically, this is a uh, fun little thing that we're doing for our new um, organized play model for the next... Uh, crush Hour Kit. Rush, crush Hour Kit, yep. So basically what this is, is um, whenever you at your local game store are playing games or, or running events, I believe it is, uh, you can snap a photo and submit it to... Uh, the hashtag my uh, mompok my store, and you'll get entered in a raffle to have your store be made into 
the new model for the Crush Hour kit. Now, if you're in a mall or something like that, that's okay. We'll take the name of your store and we'll create something abstract out of it. it out. Into yeah. A so concept. if you're like yeah. fire breathing gyms, y- yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll have we'll, a big we'll, guy breathing fire or something. Yeah. Uh, so we'll. That's really exciting. It's a really cool way for you guys to represent your local game stores. And, uh, or it could just be a strip cool. mall model. Like it could just be there's, <laughs> just a, there's like a laundromat there, and like a pawn shop, Su- a sub shop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm really excited about this. This will be really cool, and it will it'll get some cool new model out there. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys participate in that. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the results. Yeah. And if you want uh, more specific details, go to privateerpress.com yeah. and click the news button. Look for the Mompoc logo, and uh, that'll tell you everything you need to do to enter. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Now to today's model, we have Sergeant Titanica. So this is going to be the VIP, or the, not VIP. Uh, the alternate sculpt. The alternate sculpt. Gen Con model. Gen Con model. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, which is going to be available uh, both on the online store and at Gen Con. And uh, here, here and she's she is an entirely you. new monster for the game. Basically, correct. Yeah, this is not a a model that has existed previously. This is mm-hmm. brand new, whole new rules, etc. And if you're not familiar, basically we have a long standing relationship with the Ram, which is a cool like brewery right. pub place mm-hmm. that's basically around the corner from where Gen Con is held. Right. And every year we always do kind of a neat promotional alternate sculpt thing that's right with the ram so like last year for example was brew grosh mm-hmm. the year before that was that the squire one i think uh, uh yes. yeah the Voltaic Voltaic Vixen. Voltaic Vixen. Yeah. yeah and there's usually like shirts and mugs and stuff you can yeah. get so uh, usually there's kind of a theme so you can see in this model that Sergeant titanica has got like a beer truck and there's like suds coming out of it in her hand <laughs> there's always kind of a, a beer theme sort of thing to it that's right you did mention that they actually they make a beer based on Yes, the model, right? every, okay. every year we get a new we, beer that's made. Yes. Yep. And there's also, um, like when you go at, during Gen Con, their menu is all war machined out. So they'll have like asphyxious tater tots or something. <laughs> I don't know, right? right. Yeah. And if you're yeah. going to be at Gen Con uh, Wednesday night, uh, the night before Gen Con, we will be at the Ram that evening for that keg tapping party. So you mm-hmm. can come hang out with us and talk to us. <coughs> Drink some beer. Uh, I saw a couple questions real quick I wanted to hit before they scrolled off, which was like someone was asking um, if they're, they're trying to decide whether to buy the one month or six month subscription, and they're curious about what the next VIP model for the War Machine Mini Crate is. Unfortunately, we don't have that information, but I always generally recommend getting the six month subscription because in uh, the VIP model is always cool. So I definitely recommend the six month subscription, though I don't know what the next vip is going to be yeah a lot of that stuff is kept secret from us yeah that's a we definitely are, we a... are not in the know cool well now to get started uh, i'll get tony a second to put these paints on here so i'm actually going to be mixing we're going to be working on skin tones today uh primarily um since there's a lot of exposed skin on this model i think it's a, a big focal point uh the colors that i'm using to mix my own skin tone here uh which is a little off camera, unfortunately, but it's this pile down here. Uh, we've got Heartfire. Up there for us. Up there, excuse me. Up, <laughs> down, It's down somewhere. there for you, up there for us, yeah. depending on your <laughs> your camera's perspective. I, I get made fun of a lot at home for, for saying, let's go down the road, or let's go down to Bellevue. For, or Bellevue Is that, like, whatever. not a thing? Well, some people it's, say let's go down the road, and some people say let's go up the road or whatever. Oh, is that like a weird like coastal versus Midwest kind of thing? At it's all? Like Maybe a, it's like a north south. You go up for north and down for south. And yeah, you go but I over east west. I don't. I don't spe- specify. I'm like always let's go down down the road. Oh, yeah. gotcha. huh. or up or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so the colors we're using here are Heartfire, Murderous Magenta, and Arcane Blue um, to to create this kind of mid tone here. And then uh, a little bit of Mara White to bring up the the value a little bit. So I'd like to point out, by the way, that the um, her express like the the level of fidelity on her expression, like her cheekbones and stuff, is very impressive. At least from the camera perspective that I have, because of the shading you already have in there from the priming and stuff. Yeah, like her face is extremely well executed basically is what i'm trying to say so what i'm doing here is i'm taking 
I'm alternating between the mid-tone and the highlight tone that I've got mixed on my palette. Can we, let me take a look at your palette real fast. Yeah. And show so off what you're talking about. It's this color right here. So you can see this lighter tone here is what I've mixed up for the highlight. And then this tone right here is this shade tone or this like mid normal mid tone, which I'm using as a shade right now. And I'll probably build it up here in a little bit. So I'm taking these darker areas, which I can see from the Zenithal priming that mm -hmm. I've done. And I'm using that as a guideline to put in these, this darker tone to start with. And then I'll do a little bit more further shading after this, but this is at least to, to kind of get that base tone going. <coughs> and then I'm doing a, oops. Oh I man, totally I saw that. Uh, that all over uh -oh. everywhere. Yep. Oh well. But I'll hey, throw things. it away. You Start know, over. I, that actually, I like that because that perfectly highlights the concept of a lot of people saying things like, I accidentally painted a part of my model and Just you know, how, do I, how do I fix my accident, right? And yeah. the answer is, well, you can, it's paint, you can paint over it or yeah. Yeah. you wipe it off. Right? My, the other thing too is I'm working with like pretty thin down paints. So because it makes it easier to do this like wet blending technique that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to paint that area now since I've already put color there. Uh, I'm just going to use this kind of wet blending to pull it out uh, and make use of that paint while it's there. And I'm going to paint over pretty much everything else anyways, so I'm not super duper worried about that. Uh, Are you, would you say you, you're running your paints a little bit thinner than usual on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's to, just to keep them wet while they're on the model. And then... Uh, so I have a longer working time. Let's put some of this highlight up here on her face. So I have a question on what color you think about doing for the hair. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think like the classic concept of like my image of the mm -hmm. the fifty foot woman, which is you know what this is based on, is always like a brunette. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about brunette, but I also generally love. Raven tresses. I was gonna say, yeah, uh, in, in my head, like just dark, stark raven hair. Yeah, I was always, always, especially when you like you do stuff to make it look shiny. Mm -hmm. Always looks cool. That actually might be a good excuse to talk about to do either on this stream or like a next stream kind of thing if we want to continue this model. Talking about how you get that like kind of glossy comic book feel to like the the black hair kind of thing that mm -hmm. might be neat. Alex, I mean, uh, I might even be able to get to it sometime during the yeah. stream. Alex is recommending skills. red hair. Oh yeah, I mean, Colossal Smurf also says red hair. Yeah, I'm a big fan of red hair just myself. Slays me 100 percent of the time. Uh -huh. uh, Striker 911 earlier had asked if we were going to what's the gimmick for Green Fury? We are going to do yeah, we a couple spoilers little spoilers. Jeff's got some spoilers for you a little bit later. Um, as for what the gimmick for the faction is, I won't uh, steal any of Oz's thunder on that. I'll let him sort of get people hyped for it at Gen Con and stuff like that and, and talk about all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so here's a question. Did Green Fury have a ton of cloth laying around or was it stolen from an Uber Corp unveiling? Uh, actually, this is fun. We can go to the concept art. Ooh, hit it. Uh, yeah, so here's the original, like tents, original concept art. And yeah, there's a note here that says wearing old army tents for yeah. covering. Uh, so it's not even just random cloth. It's actually, yeah, you actually can got kind of, kind of a cool concept. I think, I think we have to operate in the assumption that the helmet grew with her. Yeah. <laughs> because, I, you know, I, you know, there's some concessions to want to make That's, sure the model is, but yeah, then I think. That's uh, right. It just sometimes just looks grab, cool. I, I think the idea is that she must be some kind of soldier who. I don't know the full story, but like was either subjected to testing or radiation bomb kind of that, whatever, right? right? And she grew, and of course her helmet grew with her because like the Hulk, the pants just get bigger. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But, gotta, in the, but like where the, where the they, Hulk... They do shred trips. a little bit, yeah. right? So maybe it's just very tight-fitting. And then she, and then I imagine that she grabs some tents, you know, and strung them around her kind of thing. Right. And then I like how she's got the little like ape, like... Yeah, it's the, the mini condo. Yeah. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see this super well on camera, but we got a nice like little bit of shade going on here. Oh yeah, really and the belt is tank tread. Like. Someone pointed that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's super I, that, the first time I noticed that was this morning. I was looking at, it, I was like, are those tank treads? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's kind of awesome. Yeah, I think this is actually a really cool model. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Uh, I think it's got a cool pose. I think the gimmick is cool. This is, uh, this is one of my Doug Hamilton sculpt as well. Yeah, I think this is one Which of the. I think is one of my favorite of his sculpts, actually. This is definitely one of my favorites for the Gen Con, uh, Gen Con mm -hmm. Ram model. 
So tell me, so I have one question. We we're uh, because we knew we were going to be painting a lot of flesh today, Jordan. Mm-hmm. Like when when you're painting flesh on a model of this size, how do you change up your approach from when you're doing it? Like you know, say for for figures on a thirty mil base. Um, smooth blends are a little bit more important, right? Because if you if you have a smaller model, you can get away with a lot more in terms of uh, cheating like, corners, cheating, as it were. Yeah, cheating doing more line highlights than actual, like, bl- smoothly blended highlights, um, you can't really get away with it as much on a larger scale model. Um, and this is kind of very much true for, like, the, the Totem Huntress as well, the new 75 mil scale one, because um, she's actually very similar in scale to this model. Um, <clears throat> so I think making sure that you have a good range of color, that you're not going specifically, you're not very, but you're, you have a good range of like highlight shadow and, and shade um, and that you're using more color as well. Cause one of the things that can get a little boring, especially on larger scale models is if they're all kind of um, one color, you want to, you have more room to put other colors in there. Things that are such as like environmental um, things that would affect colors on like ref- like reflected like re- light yeah, reflected or reflected light or like uh spotlights things like that mm-hmm. um which i'm going to experiment with a little bit on this model as well um but i think just like studying the the placement like placement of light is a lot <coughs> more important on the larger scale models as well um just because everything's so much bigger there's <coughs> there's a lot more to look at uh, creating a focal point is also a lot more important, um, mm-hmm. somewhere for your eye to focus, because the model is so big, there's more surface area for you to, your eyes to explore. Mm-hmm. So utilizing really strong, subtle highlights on the face and the helmet, and then moving down to like the shoulder across to the, the blah, 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 ape, and then down the like leg to the, the base. The right? building, yeah. So that's kind of things to think about and things that I'm currently thinking about while I'm painting this um, to, to kind of give the, the best effect that I can. And I'm, I'm not worrying too much about how smooth the blends are right now. I'm kind of just trying to get the color values right, um, keeping the bright areas with the bright colors. Uh, and then I'll end up moving into smoothing that out and adding a little bit more colors in the shadows as well. So basically at this point, you're just, you're just kind of broad stroking in trying to get yeah. the forms to come mm-hmm. out where exactly. your lights are going to be. Okay. And, uh, I think Jordan just did something very quickly there that almost that kind of bears talking about a little bit is on the face, the places that you really want to like focus on are like nose, cheekbones, like the forehead, top of the lip, top of the lip, yeah. little pop of the chin. Yep. Like, and, and those are, you'll, you'll see that if you look, at high quality face miniature paintings across the whole spectrum of where they're really making sure the light hits basically. Yeah, using reference is also really good too. Like um, just Googling just like female faces. Yeah. And and picking something that has a similar like facial structure to what you're painting and using that kind of as a guidepost. Well, mm-hmm. it, do me a favor really and well. spin her real quick. Actually hold her right there. <laughs> And if you, if everyone kind of looks at the stretcher face right now, there's a lot of natural shadow, mm-hmm. at least from our perspective, mm-hmm. that's built in around those cheekbones. And that's just from the light interacting with the model, basically. Right. She, this model is sculpted with like really, really, really defined, really defined prominent, cheek, yeah. prominent yeah. cheekbones. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to try and minimize that a little bit with paint uh, to kind of small, make the cheekbones less prominent. And what I'm going to do to do that is keep try and highlight more of this under this like shadowed area here uh, and keep it a little bit brighter so that it isn't <coughs> me. quite as strong of a natural shadow. Yeah, uh, Riker Zion actually brings up a really fascinating point in Twitch chat, which is using makeup guides. Because you can go on YouTube and find all sorts of videos of people who are like, here's me doing my makeup and my lipstick or whatever and my all sorts of things. And that's a good example of you could follow that to see where you want to yeah, focus your attention. They're, they're literally doing what I'm doing right now. Only specifically for a, a yeah. face, right? Is like makeup is paint for your face. 
I do want to throw in one thing about using the photo reference is I recommend that if you're going to use um, photo reference for facial values, that you make sure that you use a photo that has good lighting on facial values, Correct. not something that's been flash lit from the front or mm -hmm. is really flat. You want to make sure it actually has light and darks. Oh, I'm Tony. Totally, I yeah, work in film. That will, I'm, a, I'm a light that guy. That will tell you how... Uh, <laughs> It tell you how the form of that face is actually supposed mm -hmm. to be. Uh, and then Martin Granger in Facebook uh, has a good question. Uh, I, I hope I represent your question well because I'm a little confused on it. But basically, I think what he's asking is, uh, what are your recommendations on using a wet palette versus not a wet palette? And then maybe a recommendation on how to do a wet palette if, if you yeah. recommend one. So there's, there's really a lot of different... You actually want to lift up the corner of your thing so they can kind of see what's going on. This, I mean, like literally the, the cloth. The... Oh, I mean, like literally. Cloth. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So you just have like a big plastic thing. Yeah. So this is this is like a, a palette that you can get from an actual like store or whatever. Because um, I wanted a bigger one, and this thing like goes another. It's huge. Like, it's, it's like huge. It's, it's it's almost twice as big as you see on on camera right now. Yep. Uh, but basically, it's got this little bit of. You can see the the water in there, but it's just a small little sponge with a uh, piece of treated paper on top of it. Um, and you can use these palettes; they work really well. Um, I like them better for blending, um, just because you you can get these really like big blends. You can see a lot on here, right? And it allows me to pick a color from right here, or pick a color from right here, or right. You know, and it keeps right the paint. And it keeps moisturized, the paint moist, basically. Yeah, so I can use it for long periods of time. Like I've had this palette with paint on it for a couple of days yeah. i usually reset my palette once once a week in like on monday um so it it's nice that it gives you the ability to kind of like go to different colors and pick out specific parts of blends that you want it looks like um, bob ross's like uh his paint easel thing or whatever yeah <laughs> i mean it's, it's pretty common for for oil painting right? yeah like that you you make a little bit of a blend you kind of mix here and there and you you pick and choose the colors that you want. Tony, what's that thing called? Um, you can create your own. <laughs> Which thing? What? what? The Bob Ross thing he holds. He's got all his paints on it. Like the painter thing. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, palette. Palette. Oh, well, fine. <laughs> I, was, I thought there, there was going to be some sweet technical term. So, God, I hate um, you guys sometimes. You, you can create your own wet palette. Um, like my old one. I think I still have it over here. Um, which I'll show you guys. Is just. Uh, go ahead and stick it under the palette can there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. It is a Tupperware lid, like actually just a Tupperware lid that's got a little bit of this like indent in here. And then I just put paper towel on it, wet the paper towel, and then just put uh, parchment paper over it. And that's literally all you need. It, the, the paint and water will bead up on the, the parchment paper as opposed to having this like nice smooth blend. But it's still is good for keeping your paints wet for long periods of time. So that's kind of my recommendation. If you want to use a wet palette, um, I would try making one yourself first uh, just to see if you like using it because it's not for everybody. But um, <clears throat> I've found that it's, it's helped me a lot uh, when I'm mixing paints and, and getting blends and stuff like that. Yeah, I did like the working time I used a wet palette for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I did find I went back to just kind of doing it in a um, the little cups palettes, um, the oh, well. well palettes. Yeah, yeah. I just it, um, it, it was just a personal preference. I found one mm -hmm. of the difficulties was if you, I found that trying to get that sometimes it um, the the paint would get too watery or it would kind of start to yeah. to separate or things uh, sitting in the water too long. There's or, also some maintenance required to yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So again, as Jordan said, I will reiterate. Try it out. Experiment. See mm -hmm. if it works for you. There's no. There's no. Yes, do it. Don't do it. Just depends on how you like to paint and and what effects you're trying to get. Yeah, a lot of a lot of painting really comes down to like what your comfort zone is and like what your what works for you. So don't don't use a wet palette just because someone's like you need to use a wet palette. Use a wet palette because you're interested in what what it can offer you, uh, and your your painting right. Um, and then if it works, awesome. If it doesn't, then Cool. It's not for you. Um, I used to use a wet palette or a well palette all the time, and part of what I disliked about the well palette is I felt like I was wasting too much paint. So 
Um, I moved to the, the wet palette in an effort to try and minimize my paint consumption, excessive paint consumption. Yeah. Um, which <clears throat> it, it has curbed, which is nice. I do have some spoilers here too. I think I'm going to drop one. Yeah, go for it. Um, Oh, wait. Tony just pointed out a well, great Well, I was going to say, while, while we're painting, I knew that uh, Vandebeest had a question that kind of scrolled by um, a while ago and just wanted to know, are you using anything other than water to thin your paints? No, just water. Uh, you can use other things, too, but I, I find water is totally adequate. Um, like, there are retardants and, and thinners that you can use to either make your paint dry faster or stay wet longer. Um, but for, for a wet palette, generally, like... All you really need is water to to paint or to, to get your paints thinner. Um, should we do? do we no, no I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm okay. gonna drop some. So I'm not going I'm not gonna show the card. Okay. I'm just going to cite. I thought we had a poll for this. We're gonna get there. Calm down. What, we're, hey, we're, we have a variety of spoilers. We have we're a offer. variety. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna. What I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna spoil something from the front of her card now. I'll also spoil something from the back of her card later, and then we'll let the the chat choose another spoiler later. Um, so I'm gonna pick something from her alpha form right now. One of her abilities um, that's on the front of her card, uh, and I'm gonna choose the one I'm gonna spoil is gonna be she has reposition, um, and if you're unfamiliar with reposition in Monster Apocalypse. If this model is hit by an attack, after the attack is resolved, this model can advance up to one space. And so that gives her a lot of uh, trickiness if you're trying to set up basically combos on her. You mm -hmm. have to really plan for the fact that uh, she might wander right, off somewhere. Right, yeah, if you're going to set her up to do like the uh, double building throw or yeah, something, your right. first attack might knock her out of position. Yep. So that she her her kind of vibe in general is um, kind of like leading the. Tr I think one way of putting it is like kind of leading the troops and like mobility is sort of like um, her her kind of her kind of gimmick as it were. I don't want that people to read too much into that, but that's sort of the, the vibe I get from playing her and, and looking at her card and stuff. Okay. So that's on her alpha form, and uh, I should I should point out that it's not on her. Um, Hyperform. All right. And she obviously has other abilities, but we're not going to spoil them all today. You have to come and you have to come and hang out with us at Gen Con to see them, unless we just spoil them next week or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got something else planned for next week. Yeah, I think. So Jordan, I did have one question. So mm -hmm. so you're mixing up your own flesh tones, right? Which offers a lot of control. Yep. Um, and, and just gives you a whole variety of ways to do it. If someone we're going to paint flesh tone similar to this, not necessarily exactly, but similar to this using uh, P3 paints out of the pots. What would you recommend? Uh, this would be like Adrian flesh mixed with uh, Midland flesh and like uh, a little bit of Rin flesh. It's kind of the like the general shade highlight stuff that I'm I'm working with right okay. now. It's kind of very much in that color tone. Um, But I'm I might go a little bit cooler and put a little bit of like, um, like blue shades further into this, or maybe do some weird like yellow highlights or something. Not quite sure exactly what I want to do here. Um, I'm gonna kind of let it just evolve organically, as it were. Have you thought about what you're gonna paint the tints? Because I realize that what the color you choose for the tints might dictate heavily what color we select for the hair. Yes. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what I want to do there yet. Um, and I guess the re I know, like, for example, Redhead came up a couple of times, and I realized that Redhead with gre army green tints may would probably make her look kind of Christmassy. <laughs> uh, it, it depends on, like, what tone of yeah. color that I use for it. Um, like, there are definitely ways to do that without it appearing Christmassy. Um, it's always the danger when you're operating with red and green. Yeah, I, I, typically to avoid that, uh, I guess this is a good topic of conversation as well. Um, if you want to use red and green and want it to be not Christmassy, uh, I recommend using more, using either red with a really desaturated green or vice versa. Um, and typically you want less, like very much less of one than the other. Um, 
because typically, like Christmassy colors are an equal distribution, a pretty equal distribution of red and green, because um, they, they're pretty, they're they're generally put together. Um, <clears throat> so if you were to do like, if I were to paint this red and green, I would do like green with like a very brownish red hair, mm -hmm. and then that would cut away a lot of that like really red saturated color uh, from that like Christmas tone, right? Um, and then I would also maybe even like desaturate the green a little bit too. Um, the idea is just mess around with it until it stops looking Christmassy uh, by by changing like one or one color or the other, mm -hmm. and you'll you'll generally find a, a mix between the two that looks pretty natural and is not Christmassy. Yeah, play some play some summer beach tunes to help get your mind right. Yeah, some yeah, beach right. boys. Yeah, <clears throat> that's whole. They're wholesome, right? Don't play Christmas music when you're trying to avoid. Making it look Except Christmas the Beach Boys probably made a Christmas song. I'm sure they probably <laughs> did. Did they? Didn't everyone back then? <laughs> Do they celebrate Christmas on the beach? Of course. Who doesn't? I don't know. Why would you? You're on the beach. You don't need Christmas at that point. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I agree with Jeff here. What? <laughs> um, should we... We have a little straw poll. I think we should slap in there now. Are doing the poll? All right. Man, you're uh, just like spoiling stuff, Jeff. And well, this, this will give them like a couple minutes. And so what we're going to do is this is going to be a straw poll for whether or not you want me to spoil uh, her speed, her defense, or her, her her total hit points, her health, as it were. Um, so we'll let everyone get a chance to to give everyone a couple minutes to vote in Twitch and Facebook um, to to and we'll just add them together, basically. Oh, I guess it's the same poll. I'm a crazy person. Um, but yeah, and then that'll be if we're, what we're going to spoil next, basically, which kind of her base stats, as it were. So vote I'm away. I'm curious to know what, what people are most interested in in base stats. Like, what do you want to know about models? And if it's, mm -hmm. if it's you know... Well, all three of them are pretty speed relevant. speed or def, but it's like, what... Is it because of this model or because or all models in general? I mean, I, I think... Yeah. Question. No, I, I think I understand where you're trying to come from. is Because, like... Like, you know, she's a lithe-looking woman, mm -hmm. so you can probably draw some natural conclusions that she's on the speedier side. Mm -hmm. But what does speedier side... Because speedier side can be, oh, she's speed, let's say, six, for example, but she has abilities that, you know, make her speedier in some way or feel right. speedier. Or is she just naturally very high speed mm -hmm. and doesn't have any abilities to augment. There's ways, yeah. you know, to, to approach that. Or maybe she's uh, average speed, but um, just... Damn it, someone very, already... Very hard someone to already, hit. Darn it, someone already spoiled this stuff. See, that's what I was afraid of. Darn it, I knew it. Aww. Look at you people cheating Look the system. That. We All still right. have more spoilers, don't worry. Yeah. I was I was wondering about that because I'm pretty sure I, I was like, I was when I was thinking about this, I'm like, I think some parts of her have been spoiled, but let's just do that. So, yes, actually, there we go. We'll just we'll just keep the votes going. We'll see where we go, and then I'll just spoil all, all of them. I'll even yeah, I'll even spoil her her brawl and stuff, just to make up for our snafu. Uh, so uh, another thing I kind of want to talk about uh, related to models in general, but it's definitely more important in larger scale models, is uh, making sure that you have your spread of. Uh, values correct and by that I mean the bright areas of the model so generally speaking <coughs> excuse me uh, you want your levels of brightness to be focused more at the top and get darker as you go down the model uh, just because like the lights impacting from the top and there's it's not an underlit model so the face and the the helmet the shoulders should be the brightest part of the model. Next should be her chest area and this arm, followed by the leg. And then down here, this building and the bottom of her leg should be the darkest part. Um, aside from like underneath here, where it would be really, really, really dark because she's mm -hmm. bent over or hunched over a little bit. Um, so those are definitely some like really important things to think about. Can we really emphasize like her her like eight pack? She's just ripped. <laughs> she just like doesn't actually have that much of 
Oh. No, but I'm saying you should paint one on there. Just oh, she's just mm. yoked. She just goes to the gym and does the crunches. <laughs> just does the crunches. <laughs> All right, let's see. We'll, we'll see where the poll's at, and then I'll just for funsies, and then we'll uh, show me the results. So we got a pretty equal spread, kind of. So I think based on that and the fact that some of this stuff has been spoiled previously, I'll just go ahead and give all three of them, basically. Uh, so she's speed seven. So she's 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 cruising, especially combined with, like I said, the, the reposition. Uh, she's def nine. And these are true for both her alpha and her hyper form. Mm -hmm. And then her total health is ten, five in each form. So ten is like average question mark sliding towards the the slightly more noodly is it uh, hit points 10 10 11 is the yeah. middle range yep and so 10 is kind of like the the lower half of the mid range as it were kind yeah. of if is it it's it's average but a little bit squirrelier is there is there anybody out there who knows is there a technical term for when something is dead in the middle and then you upside or downside the average oh do you know what I mean? Yeah, Like, yeah. it's the dead center point, but when you lean one way or the other, is there, a, is there like, a mathematical term for that? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, 10, 10 is definitely a little bit on the um, the, the less hardy side of the scale, um, which is offset a little bit by her, her, her decent speed and defense and sort of her, her trickiness, like the repo, makes it a little bit difficult to come to grips with her. Vandebeest has a really cool idea that I think is the coolest idea I've heard in a long time, which is that someone should do their Monpok monsters lit from below like it's night and people are shining spotlights up at them. That would have such a cool noir effect. Yeah. Like I can already see it in my mind. Like, and you and what you would do is you'd paint rad. you'd paint like the buildings like basically like black. Yeah. With like spotlight. with spotlights shining yeah, up, up the sides. Oh yeah. Uh, that's the best. There we go. Cl clever girl. I was thinking about doing something kind of like that and doing like the, I've seen police this, police light. Oh reflections my gosh! Yeah, like and you have like police legs. cruisers on the ground. Like yeah. you could sculpt little police yeah. cruisers, and you'd have like the red and blue lights on. Like I, w I was definitely thinking uh, about something like that. Because <clears throat> like even if it's sunny out, right? Like this this is gonna rely or is going to reflect on. Yeah, on the skin, right? I think um, I think all the buildings that I've seen people do in general, and I've and I've raved about this on many streams where we paint Monpok models. But the building paint jobs and conversions people are doing mm -hmm. are just the coolest thing. We're like yeah, the, we've been the neon so many lights on, on and the people painters who yeah. have uh, like the ones where they've they look like they've been destroyed. They have mm -hmm. like the piping and stuff coming out of it. Oh man, this is so awesome. I'm still waiting on somebody to do like a really sweet conversion. Or a diorama, rather, with, like, two monsters fighting and destroyed buildings all around them. Do we have... Is there a diorama category at all for any of our painting competitions? Um, kind of. Uh, it's it's wrapped into, like, another category. Got it. It's not exclusively... Yeah, I should... When I... So I just got most of the comp for my mom Pac army. I've kind of waffled in the last year on settling on an army. <clears throat> and so I've picked up parts of several armies. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so the other day I finally was like, I know what I want to do. I'm going to do it. I ordered everything. I got all the buildings, all the monsters and stuff, but I would, I think I might get it all done. Like neon skyline, Tokyo. I, that looks rad. Like I've, yeah. I like, I like, you, you know, look. like the classic Miami, uh, Miami, Miami, um, like sun, like neon sunset, mm -hmm. like imagery, like that's kind of what I want to capture. Yeah, there have been some really good uh, just uh, images on P3 painters of that kind of look. Yeah. yeah speaking of P3 Lamborghinis painters. Lamborghinis just driving down the streets nonstop. We should go over P3 Let's painters. Let's do P3 yeah. painters. And Jordan, so take for, a little bit of a for break. people who may not know, mm -hmm. what is P3 painters? So P3 painters is a hashtag that we use <clears throat> to have. We're cool. We're hip. We're, we're hashtagging. We're cool. We're hip. We're hashtagging. Yeah. Yo. Uh, it's basically a place for the community to post finished pictures of their painted models for us to take a look at and talk about on stream. So every stream, Tony and I typically pick, you know, two, three, or four uh, P3 painters images that we are interested in in some way, be it there's something cool about the way it's 
been altered or the way it's painted, if there's like freehand on it, what have you. Cool basing. Cool basing. Like there's a lot of different things that we look at, but it's basically if an image speaks to us in some way, it's like, that's really cool or that's really interesting. We will pick it, we'll pull it aside for the stream and we'll show it to you guys and we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit about what we liked about it on stream. So we're going to do that now. Tony and I have picked out, I believe it was three different three, images. Yeah, we have three for today. <clears throat> so let's go to our first one. Yeah, just make sure I got the first one. Okay, here we go. Speaking of Mompoc oh, buildings. Yeah, yes, I've that's seen this one before. Part and this of the one reason is we were so talking sick. about Mompoc buildings. Uh, this is that like really cool cartoon style. Yeah, the comic book style. Com or rather comic book style uh, painting. Uh, I Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this effect generally. But I think on the buildings is where I've seen it done the best. And this is like a really good example of like mm -hmm. how, how I like it, right? It's got this really exaggerated shadow. Um, like you can see that reflection. Yeah, it's got the chrome style. It's got that, like not, not quite chrome, but like super reflective metal yeah. on the top. And it's got that nice like split in the middle. Um, and then it's got the like really deep shadow, exaggerated shadow on the cylind cylindrical the uh, silo like tank or whatever. Yeah. Um, I also really am a fan of how the base is done. Dude, the parking Having lot. Having a little parking lot in there so is sick. super cool. <clears throat> so yeah, that is, yeah, this is, that's definitely my favorite part. of This, this looks like something out of like Sim city or something. Yeah. You're right. This <laughs> totally. looks like, this looks like someone just like was playing Sim city and they're like, I bet I can just post a picture of my building and they'll totally like it. No, this is incredible. It looks awesome. And this is from Steven Sojit. No, Steven, I apologize for butchering your yeah. last name. I'm sure I didn't get that right. Yeah, that's I awesome. I can't even yeah. see all oh, the here. There's, there's there's actually, we can see some different. Oh, now, sweet. is that grass or is that like toxic here. waste? Uh, let's find out. Looks oh, like it's, oh, look. Yeah, he it's even, foliage. But he yeah, he even, oh, no, he even drew on the foliage. Did like a yeah. 2D top-down oh, map. Oh, yeah. my gosh. This is what I'm talking about. Like, this is why I Oh, my gosh. Is that like the extra bit. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks really Extra good from the back here. Oh, look, is that like all brickwork kind of? He can you zoom in and all? Do you see that? What I'm talking no, about? I can't, like, I can't zoom in, but it, it? I think they're just window panes. No, but like, but, next but he to did them, them individually. You see, there's some lighter little bits in there oh, between. Maybe. Striker, uh, something you don't know about. Oh yeah, Mompoc. there's definitely some uh, brick texture there. Everybody just teleports to wherever they are, uh, so they don't need parking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we should come up with a parking garage building, we, we actually. Should that should be a building, building where yeah. you, like, when you smash it, like, cars come out and you can, like, throw them at people or something. <laughs> you know, actually, I would love to see, like, an alternate apartment building that's just a parking garage. Oh, that's a cool idea, yeah. Which is actually a really neat idea. Um, yeah, anyway, any cool ways to, like, <clears throat> diversify the, the city is always fun. and Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, this is really sweet. Thank you for submitting this. Um what do we got so next? Cool thing to look to. Let's go to the next one. It's going to be hard to top that, I'm not going to lie. So this is something that um, – did you – we didn't pull any of the other images. For, for no, the he did. there were several. This is the only yeah. one that we so pulled. This is, this is just one model out of the, like, bunch that were posted of this army. And the, the thing I really liked about it is that it's got this really neat, like, neon green theme throughout – all of the models, and it's mm -hmm. all done in a really cool and interesting way. Um, I wish we had more of the the, the models to show, um, just because it gives you a better idea. Like the the cultists, I really liked. Yeah, no, um, this is cool because what I like about it, it looks like he's kind of rising out of the ground. Yeah, it it, it definitely looks like the the Omodamos is being created out of that yeah. green. Yeah, he's manifesting smoke. as yeah. it were. Let's see. Tony looks like he's pulling pulling it up right now. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I just. Uh, but this stood out to me just because um, it's it's just not often that you see complete armies, uh, especially painted up in just a, a, a single color, monochromatic, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, different greens. But that there's a lot going on. It's not just one color slapped yeah. on right. there. Right. Yeah. It's you have that wash glow shaded. That's its own there's, specific yeah. color. And then you have the armor, which is its own yeah. independent shade of green. And this is this is a good example. I'm having a hard time. I think we're just going to have to skip it. It's going to take too long. For oh, there we go. All right, there we go. Um, this is just a good example of looking at greens, and you can see that there are still contrasts of warm green mm -hmm. and cool green. Yeah. So even using one color, still able to get um, 
those different um, temperature contrasts. So Sorry, I'm just a little distracted trying to get this. Yeah, so we're the length of these cultists that we're going to add gonna them in here. These cultists in here. Oh, there we go. Did it work? Yeah, I think it worked. Hey, we got it. Hey, yeah. hey, cultists. Yeah. So it like, looked kind of like the Army of the Dead from like Lord of the Rings, the films. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. That's part of I think what like drew me to it. But um, uh, yeah, this the cultists are really good. I like you, how you see the separation between the like the chainmail, the masks, and the cloaks, which are that kind of like eerie green color. Um, yeah, I like this Those a lot. Cool. I think this is a really neat army. Um, and I like that the the war beasts too have that like green, that really like yellow green on their faces, mm -hmm. and it kind of like blends into the rest of the the model. Um, it just kind of going back to like picking a focal point. It's the, like very much that is what I'm talking about. It is like you you're putting a, a specific point for your the person to look at when they're looking at your model, and, and it does a really good job of that. And that's from Marcus Paints Models. Nice job, Marcus. Good job, Marcus. All right, and then our, our last, last image. If Tony Any day now. There, there he is. Go. Oh, man. I always love the Mountain King. Yeah, I love Mountain Kings. Also, I really like this base. This base is sweet. Um, I think there's a couple of images that yeah, I'll, pull it. I'll kind yeah. of cycle through it a little bit. So this is one of those, like, halfway underwater, like, sculpted. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice. Yeah, yeah a, he's got, like, a there's other pictures three straight there, up, but... like, one inch of... Uh, there's water effects there, yeah. Dang. Which is a lot of work to do, by yeah, the there's way. there's a lot of there's detail. A, there's a lot going on on this model. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. because you have to, like, to, to do that, you have to, like, stick it in, like, a, a container, basically. And then you have to do it by layers, often. Right, yeah. You pour it in there, wait for a layer to dry, pour it in there. It's even, like, they even got good rippling Mm -hmm. Oh around wow! Around the rocks and stuff, like Dude, there's this, there's this, some work put into this. This person does like train dioramas for a living <laughs> at this level. Yeah, oh, I like how he's got the whelp in his hand. Yeah, the underlining. Oh from, yeah, yeah, the underlining from like the fire whelp. The fire there. whelp is actually underlining all these rocks individually. This is that is cool. This is sick. Oh, yeah, and he's got like all, all the, the bits moss. Of moss yep. have been added into the cracks. There's a crevices. lot going on here. This is easy to get lost in the uh, like in a good way, right? Yeah. Like there's there's a there's a story being told here. Now the other thing is like this is this is another um, example of like there's a lot going on and there's a lot of different colors and a lot of different things happening, but it's all working yeah together for me. This is a diorama on a model. Yeah. There's a, just, there's yeah, this a is, lot of places to look. This is one of the things that I like when, when people do a lot of these like larger models is they make the model into a diorama or into something more than just like the painted model. So, yeah, I really, lo I really love this. This is really well done um, in Dave's life. Good job. Thank you so much for, for posting this. Um, but, yeah, keep posting everything on P3, hashtag P3 Painters, you guys, um, be it on Facebook, Twitter, uh, I think Instagram as well. Is, yeah, Instagram's, Instagram's our primary, one. yeah. yeah. Um, so we do check them all. Uh, so feel free to post on whatever is more comfortable for you guys. Um, but yeah, check. Uh, please keep posting. We love looking yeah. at them every Thursday. And and um, and I'm not sure if this is a faux pas, but like, go and follow these people too. Like, go and check out their Instagrams. Mm -hmm. And if they're posting all these cool men, like, give these people a follow. Like, support their hobby because oh, no. they're doing some incredible work here. And we're back. We're back to painting. I may have accidentally spilled paint on me. <laughs> <laughs> now we can talk a little bit about how to paint, get paint out of your uh, out of your clothes. Answer is you can't. Uh, you actually kind of can. <laughs> I've, um, I've been unsuccessful having, with that in Having the past. done it a few times, uh, I've gotten fairly proficient at it. Um, you definitely want to get at it before it dries, for one. Uh, and you want to dab at it. Don't don't like rub the spot. Just yeah, because that it, I mean that's like wine or blood or anything that yeah. stains. You, you don't want to rub it because that just pushes it into the fibers, basically. Yeah. So give me just a moment. We folks. should get you a bib, Drake. Oh yes. my god, can we get a dragoon? Has a couple of shirts for painting. Actually, I'm lazy enough. I don't ever change my clothes, which is why I don't ever wear I'm nice always... clothes when I'm painting. Is just too much of a I just, chance. I'm just I only have something. literally one shirt and one pair of shorts. I just don't change ever. <laughs> I just shower. He's, I just shower. Just, 
Yeah, I just shower in my clothes. It's good to go. Having yeah. shared multiple rooms with this guy at conventions, I can attest that yeah, yeah. he is not, a, not in fact, lying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or maybe he is. Who knows? You'll never find out. Yeah, secretly, uh, I, I'm like I'm like a superhero where I just have the sh- the same shirt in my closet 70 times. Yeah. Uh, All right. I do. I, kind of, I, I want to ask this question to uh, which I had time to make a poll. But um, what for the painters out there? What is the what is the worst thing you've ruined or the biggest mistake you've made dropping paint on something? And for me, it was a, a carpet in an apartment. Oh, yeah. Like, no, it was about just to say. a tiny, you know, it was like the size of a coaster. That ended up being a spill. It just knocked some paint over, but it, it we couldn't get it out. We ended up oh, yeah. having to lose deposit because there's this spot. Oh on yeah, the floor I mean, of that's probably the answer ninety percent of the time, right there. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna do something a little interesting here. I'm gonna add a whole bunch of color in the shadows. <coughs> um, because what, what colors you got? Uh, so this is like the skin tone, pretty heavily mixed with like murderous magenta. I, and go for this, like, I feel like uh, blue is also a common color that gets mixed in for skin tones, for dark skin tones. Is that true? Or am I a crazy uh, person? I mean, your your skin naturally has some, like, blue tones to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not uncommon. Because I'm blue-blooded. Be the case. Um, but I tend to paint with, like, a little bit more, like, saturated colors. Just because I, I like messing around with those colors a lot more. Um, but I'll spin this around here in a second so you guys can see kind of what I'm doing in the shadowed areas. Uh, I think I also promised someone earlier um, her brawl attack, which I think I'm going to spoil real quick. Uh, I'm just going to kind of give the, the raw surgical stats here. Uh, her brawl... Uh, get seven white dice and four blue dice. This is an alpha form. Uh, and it has precision strike, which is you can reroll one action die, which are the white die, on this attack. And then in her hyper form, her brawl goes from being a 7-4 to an 8-5, so she gets a little meaner, as it were. And um, she keeps precision strike, but also gains combo strike, which is if this model, or I'm sorry, if this attack hits... After the attack is resolved, this model can immediately make a power attack. So she can, it, it's almost in a way, it's kind of like a, the rapid strike where you get a brawl twice. Um, it, you get to punch someone, and if you punch someone, you can like body slam them or whatever, right? You know, tuck them into a building kind of thing. So she definitely gets a little bit more ferocious. She goes from being kind of squirrely and mobility based in her first form, and then she kind of rages out, I guess, yeah. and goes in and gives you a good old face punching. So that's just her her brawl on both her forms. So you guys should be able to see kind of what I'm talking about with those, that like reddish undertone and a shade. Yeah, it's looking good. Down in here and up in the shoulder. That's adding a lot of depth to her yeah. Yeah, skin and that, tone. It's kind of why you want to do stuff like that is it adds a lot more visual interest because... What I was talking about earlier where you just have, like, three main skin, skin tones. This is kind of why you don't, like, mixing your own skin tones is really nice. Because you can add all of these really interesting colors to them. Um, that makes them feel more natural or more interesting, even, um, than your, your standard traditional skin tones. And, yeah, don't, don't be afraid to just, like, mess around with it. Because, like, I wasn't sure how, the, how good this would look, but... You know, it turned out looking pretty cool. So I'm just going to stick with it. Maybe add a, a further deeper shade after um, just to help define a little bit more <coughs> of that shadowed area. Which so I might do right now, actually. We had a question from Quasador8086 uh, asking if this is the studio version or your personal. So... Um, this is probably going to be the one that's going to be on display in the RAM, um, depending on what time and stuff looks like for getting stuff painted. Um, so th- the real answer is I'm not 100% sure, um, but it's possible that this will be 
the Studio One, it's possible that it won't be. Um, there are multiples that need to get painted anyways before Gen Con, so um, we might just get this one to be either one. Because we do, we do have one that goes on display in, in the RAM. So this might <coughs> end up being that one, or this might end up being the Studio One. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of bumper running out of time. I want to see you start getting going on the, uh, the green. I want the hair. How that would look. There's also a request for, I don't know what your plans were to paint the, uh, the condo, but someone, someone requested a pink fluffy condo. Which I actually, I like that idea. Then I, I was thinking maybe like a grape ape. Grape like ape. Definitely a, a, a stuffed animal of some sort. That's some uh, wacky racers right there. That's an old one, yeah. Yeah, I always love that show. I never liked that one. What? No, I didn't. Oh. I watched it all because, you know, oh. back in the... Because uh, that, that was all the same time as like Thunder... What, Thunder, Thunder the Barbarian? No, no, no. What's the racing sh movie? Uh, the Thunder Run? What, darn it. Someone in chat is going to get my back here in a second. I think I have Burt Reynolds in it and stuff. Anyways, someone will hit me in here in a second. Uh, I, before we Cannonball Run. Thank you, Cannonball Run, because that was all kind of in the same time period. I loved all those goofy race movies. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna slap. I'm gonna lay down another uh, spoiler before we my time runs out today too. So this is the back of her car. This is her hyper form. So she she loses reposition, which I was talking about earlier. Um, and she's going to gain an ability called Lead from the Front, which is, while within three spaces of this model, the blast and brawl attacks of allied units gain precision strike. So allied units gain precision strike, which is, like I mentioned earlier, you can reroll one action die on this attack. So around her, uh, her buddy units get a little bit more accurate because they get a reroll. And they need that. Yeah. So, again, this is kind of her, her, her kind of shtick is... Um, she's kind of uh, like a leader, like a military leader in a way, and she's got some mobility, and then when she goes in the hyper form, uh, she, she loses a little bit of that mobility, she loses reposition, but she gains more abilities that augment uh, the stuff around her. Yeah, see, Colossal Morphs to my back with Cannibal Run. So I'm going to paint these eyes in here real quick. Just to help. Pull the face together a little mm -hmm. bit. One of the things I really like about larger scale models is because the eyes are larger, you can really get in there and put some like really cool color. Because you can actually like visibly paint the irises. So if you want to have the model have blue eyes, sorry, I have to pull this off to get this eye painted. Uh, Arendator Gaming asks, will she get her own units? Uh, I I don't know what the the plan is. I think the idea is just for it to be, become its own like faction. Faction, yeah, the Green Fury faction. Yeah. So I, I don't know what Oz's full plans are. I haven't seen like a release schedule or how that's shaping out, but I, I think the idea, much like how um, at uh, Lock and Load, we spoiled some of like the Kraken Octisy, mm -hmm. Squidward guys uh, <laughs> coming out. Like the undersea monsters and stuff. Right. Uh, I think the plan is also to develop Green Fury into its own whole thing as well. Well, there's a, there's at least one piece of concept art for a unit yeah. that I've seen. And then he also asks about a new faction for destroyers. Yeah, there's always stuff coming out. New faction for de oh for destroyers. Sorry. Yeah. I was confused uh, and, about Planet Eaters. Like, and just what I would recommend is definitely uh, Oz is going to be like running Mompok tournaments and stuff at Gen Con. So people should definitely try and pump him for spoilers um, while you're if you're there, and then I'm sure that stuff will definitely disseminate out to the online community. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of Mompok is doing great. Everyone's really excited about it. It sells extremely well. We're really happy with the game. It this game has got legs, and we're going to be releasing stuff for years to come. So. Pardon me, folks. No, oh, you're doing the eyes? Yeah, this is... Like... Do you have uh, some good advice on how to do eyes? Because eyes, when I was painting, was like my bane. Um, yeah, I'll let you finish so... your eyes before you do this, because... Hold this... on. I, can... I got you, boo. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh, hey, Tony, do we have a Formula P3 Presents video? Do we? <laughs> Eric, right, right, go through the list. Human Faces is right there. Out. I saw that one. No, it's... Uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, faces... Uh, 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 
Maybe. Is it under? I thought we had one specifically for eyes. Oh, there it is. is. Painting eyes. Bam. Yeah, painting eyes is, oh, and I've had people explain to me a million times, I just don't have the combination of manual dexterity plus vision plus patience to uh, to handle eyes without putting investing the time into practicing on it. And as someone who is notoriously lazy. Uh, a lot of it has to do with just focusing or like figuring out a way that works for you to paint eyes that you're happy with you're happy with and that you can physically do right like if if you don't have the dexterity to like get in there and get a perfect little pupil like put a little dot in there like mm -hmm. something is generally better than nothing um the way that we typically do this and you can watch the the video for a full in-depth kind of Run down on, on how it works, but um, <clears throat> typically uh, you are going to get a little bit. Of, you're going to base coat the eye in um, in black, and then you're going to paint. And that's the that's the journey, like a lot of just shadow, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's it's to to define the eye with yep. a, a black line, right? Like a dark line, um, and then you're gonna paint it with like Menoth white highlights. So yeah, like you're gonna, you're gonna put like a, a white ovalish thing in yeah. there and on you, the eyeball. You don't want to use like natural white, and, and the reason why is your eye is not naturally. Yeah, just like your teeth aren't pearly white, actually. Right. Yeah. Um, they have a, always will have a little bit of discoloration to them. And like even what I'm doing now is I'm adding a little bit of um, like a, a pinkish color into the corners of the eyes. Uh, we'll have to get a zoom in on these eyes after we're done here. Can probably be a pretty decent way to close out the show. Yeah. Um, just to add a little bit more color variation, um, which is something that's a lot easier to do on larger scale models, obviously because the eyes are like four times as large as they are on smaller models. Um, but adding a little bit of that like pinkish color into the, into the corners um, adds more realism because if you look at the corners of your eyes, there's <coughs> always that exposed kind of redness there. Yeah, you got a little bit of reddening always, kind yeah. of the, the veins um, and stuff. So adding that in there is a real good way to create more realism. Uh, and then what I do is I'm gonna make her eyes like really blue, like a very vibrant blue. Green. Oh wait, no, we're gonna have probably a green tint yeah. thing. Dang it! Because if we were gonna go red, I always like. Well, green I'm, eyes I'm gonna use this hair. like arcane blue that I've been using in the skin. Uh, okay. Just because it's, um, it just kind of pulls more of that color into other parts of the model. Um. So, I'm going to. Let's see how I want to do this. So I'm going to create two different mixes of this color. I'm going to do a darker color on the outside to create a dark line around the iris. And then I'm going to fill it in with the brighter color. So I'm going in with a little bit of bad bruise here. And typically what you want to do is you want to paint the eye in the upper section of the eyeball and leave a little bit of exposed white <clears throat> Jordan, I'm going to come in. I'm going to try and get that camera a little tighter. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, not too bad. If you can pull it to the left just a little bit, that'll help. Yeah, so you guys should be able to see the eyes pretty pretty well there. Uh, and then I'm going to take 
this brighter color. And if you've ever looked at your iris, right, you've got a really dark, typically you'll have a darker line um, around the outside edge of the iris. And then you'll have the color of the pupil. And then you'll have a black dot. in the middle of that, which is the very inside part of your eye. So. Oh yeah, her eyes look like they're just glowy blue. Yeah. So Not this, like unnaturally glowy, but just colorful. Yeah, very, very bright. Like I tend to prefer to paint my eyes a little bit brighter. I Make mean, them um, pop more? Yeah, they just pop. Uh, even if they look a little unnatural, I just kind of prefer that that look. Um, and there's two two steps left, right? So the first one is to put in that very center dot, right? And pardon me if this is a little harder to see. Inquisitor asks, "How big is Jordan's palette? It looks huge. I legitimately think Jordan's palette is like eight inches by fourteen inches. Like it's massive. Right. Yeah, it's very big." Definitely more is, than six inches wide. Yeah. And this, uh, I think we want to <clears throat> put this up as a brush tip because this is a different way of painting eyes than the video um, that I posted with, with Dallas. That that one is a little more um, straightforward and just getting, uh, it has fewer steps in getting the eyes done. It is done on a 30 mil base model or on 28 mil. Yeah, this um, is something that's a lot easier to do and it's something that you really only can do in a larger scale model. Um, so this is something, for instance, that you could do on the Totem Huntress or on our busts, for instance, or this model or future humanoid models for Monpok that are monsters, right? Um, so this is just a really good example of how to paint eyes at a larger scale. Gecko in a suit. I need a buying link for that. If you're talking, or if you're referring to Sergeant Titanica, she should be available during Gen Con. Yep. In the is. online store. Mm -hmm. So, so from the first through the third, if you go to privateerpress.com, the online store, uh, you'll be able to buy the model there. So it is a con exclusive. It will only be available when we are at conventions. Mm -hmm. There was a an earlier question here. It was a little. All right, and then the last thing you guys want to do is because your eyes are glossy, you want to put a reflective white dot um, mm -hmm. somewhere on the eye to reflect the light that's it's kind of reminiscent of like um, we have a jewel video, right? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if we have a jewels video because sometimes like the the because very commonly in. Um, Jewel, when you're painting jewels and stuff, you'll have that reflective white dot. Mm -hmm. And it, this isn't perfect. Um, the one on the left might be a little big. But I think that I'm pretty happy with how that is yeah. coming together. So um, I want to... I would like to address really fast. Martin Granger, with the cloth on the model, how would you paint different clothing materials like leather, cloth, and silk to make them appear the material they would be painting? Martin, that is a great question. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go into that today because it's rather deep. Um, but for now, uh, if you go to YouTube and Privateer Press Prime and go to the Formula P3 Presents channel, mm -hmm. there are actually um, a handful of videos on there that talk about painting different textures, leather, cloth, uh, armor, shiny bits, all of that. So mm -hmm. take a look around on there, and that's going to be filled with great tips on on getting different texture looks from painting. And uh, what we can probably do as well is after this, we can probably post a picture of her face. Yeah, Quasar was asking if once you're kind of done what you're in the middle of doing right now, if you could tilt her head back a little bit, like take her off her mount maybe. Yeah. And um, just so get a kind of a... a yeah, take a, take a deeper look at, at what's I'm going just, on the face. What I'm doing is I'm highlighting the face a little bit to kind of add a little bit more shape. 
But uh, yeah, we can we can do this. Let me see if I can. Hold on. We're gonna, I'm gonna, gonna go put it with the camera. To focus. Yeah. No. Camera. We need the head to gaffer. We need the we need the key grip. Yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah, we're all we're all just kind of sitting here staring at the at the, at the face. <laughs> nice, that looks excellent. Yeah. All right. I think we're kind of running out of time here, Jordan. Yeah, so I think that's probably it for for this week. Um, Maybe we'll bring this back and work on it a little bit next week. Yeah, that'd be fun. What what we all want to do here um, to to promote stuff before Gen Con. But uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, I'll make sure we get a photo that her face pulled together so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Uh, and we'll post it on on the the Facebooks and the Instagrams and stuff. Might, we might even just post it to P3 Painters. That's probably, probably a good, good place, place to, to put post it. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So uh, cool. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, well, uh, last week before we go on a short break before, before Gen, Gen Con, Con. Uh, yep. which I'm super excited for. If any of you are going to be attending, come say hello to me there. I will be in the booth most of the weekend, I believe. Um, if not, I'll just be running around. So um, feel free to, to drop by and say hello. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you guys. Thanks for tuning in again. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Well, well met. Well, well met. Well met, sir. <laughs>